So I'm a teacher seven, Mr. Barry here. Today is lesson number six for the computer literacy course. And today we'll be going in and working with our Google Drive. I'm going to show you actually how to add an app to your Google Drive and have some fun there. Next, we'll be diving into Google Photos and seeing why this is a great app and not just a good app. And then after that, we'll be going in and looking at our Google templates and using Google Docs to access these templates and seeing some of the great documents that we can actually create using Google Docs and the templates. But first, I want to give a wonderful shout out to the anonymous subscriber who bought me this. So this is amazing. Um, the other day, I got a knock on the door and it was an Amazon package there and I opened it up and I go, well, I didn't buy I haven't purchased anything from Amazon here this week, so I wasn't expecting this. I opened it up and it was said there, anonymous subscriber. I go, oh right, this is so wonderful. So it's got a survival kit in there. It has some LED lights that you link up and they actually are, they work with sound. So I was able to hook it up with my Tesla and this is the result. Of course, I have to use copyrighted free music. Um, I was trying out with other music, of course, when I was really playing with it, but yeah, I show you the video there. And then I also got a mattress protector because someone knows that I have dogs, and that is awesome. So thank you again, and I have to give you a really good, big, loud shout out for you to the anonymous subscriber. And it actually, it's anonymous. They didn't say their name. But thank you again, and you are wonderful. <laughs> thank you. Uh, just to let you know, everyone, that if you go to my main YouTube channel at Summer Teacher 7, and you look at the very top right hand corner right there, there is a PayPal link. So you can click there and put a few pennies in there, or just a few dollars, whatever you want to do, and buy me some coffee. That would be awesome and give me energy to make more videos for you. So you just click up there and you can donate any amount that you want. So that is awesome there and I thank you for everyone who has done that and bought me some coffee in the past. And if you're new to the channel, please click on subscribe to get the latest on some of this technology dealing with Chromebooks, Windows 10 and other types of technology. If you like these types of videos, make sure you do click on thumbs up because that really helps the channel and comment down below. If you have a question, you can write down the question in the comments and I'll make sure that I try to get to your question and answer it as quick as I can. So let's dive into the Google Drive. So here we are in my Google Drive. Now what's really nice about this is at the very top here we have the quick access so any work that you've been working on recently will show up up there and then if we scroll down a little bit you can see all the folders and all your other work will be down there. Now you can sort it alphabetically or by last modified as well as by even file size. Now what I'm going to do is click on the new button. Now what I was noticing last week is some of my students would double click on the new button and if they double clicked on it, they would accidentally click on the new folder option. And if they did that, you'd get this new option here. Just click on cancel and go back to new. We'll be working with Google Docs for the next few lessons. We'll be After that will be Google Sheets, Google Slides, Google Forms. Now we'll be working with 16 different lessons and getting into these other ones in the future weeks. Now below all this we have more. If I click there you notice I have many options for these apps as well. And If I want to add a new app all I have to do is go to the bottom of the list and click on connect more apps. So if you click there you'll be seeing this list here and you'll have really hundreds of different applications that you can install on your Google Drive. Now you'll be able to use this on your Windows computer, your Mac, or even on your Chromebook. Now you can go up at the top and actually search these apps if you had an idea of which one you wanted to find. Or you can just go through the list and oh I found one. It's the GIMP Online. So I'm going to click it and notice here we can read about it, read reviews that people have written about it. And if I like the app I can just click on the blue button that says install. Then you have to click on continue and then you have to click on allow. This basically allows the app to access or view and manage your Google Drive files and folders that you have opened and created within this app. 
Now the GIMP Online has been connected to your Google Drive and been installed. You click on OK and now you notice that you'll be able to find it within the Apps Launcher icon. This will work on your Windows, Mac or Chromebook and so you'll be found in the Chrome Apps and you'll also be found within the Google Drive when you go to New and then Open With you'll find that option there. So let's close this off and see if we can find it. So I'm going to click on New and then click on More and there it is. It's found right there, GIMP Online. I'm also going to be able to find it within my Google Apps. So once you click it, you'll notice that it will be added to the very bottom of your list. And there it is, GIMP Online. Now let's say that you want to remove that app. All you have to do is click down here into the launcher and now reveal more apps here. Click on the little carrot and this reveals all of your apps that you have installed. Find the app that you want, right click it and then click on uninstall. You'll be asked are you sure and go ahead and click on uninstall if you don't want it and you'll remove it from your Google account as well as your Chromebook and your Google Drive. So the next feature that I want to go over is the search and drive feature. So if you click in there and type in lesson 5 for me, it's going to bring up all the documents that have lesson 5 in them. Now the amazing thing is if it was a document that had the word lesson 5 in it, it doesn't have to be the title. It can be just part of the document, the actual words in the document. You'll search that and bring that up as well. You'll also notice that it brings up all the Google Docs, the Google Sheets, as well as my Microsoft Word documents that have the words Lesson 5 in them, as well as PDF documents. It will also bring up any images if you saved images in your Google Drive that have Lesson 5 in them. So it's a quick and easy way to search your entire drive in seconds. The next feature I want to go over is the sorting feature. Now here I am, we see the workspace here and notice how we can have all the names of the files and folders here. We can sort it by owner, last modified, or even the file size. So if I go over here and I click on name, we now see it's done in alphabetical order in the other way. So it's starting from the Z's going to A's. If I click it again, it now starts with the numbers and then it goes from there, A, B, C. Now the owners would be me. If you go by last modified, you notice that you can go by last modified by me or last opened by me. So in this way, it's an easy way to find all of your work and sort it just the way that you like it. And now I want to go over what happens when you right click on a file or folder within your drive. Now whenever you do, you get this context menu that comes up. and I have magnified it for you. If you want to remove it, click on remove and it takes it to the trash. You can actually enter the trash if you need to or it will purge out of the system eventually. Other options that we see here would be such as open with. It can actually open it with your other apps that you've installed. You can share it with others. You can get a link. You can add a shortcut to the drive. You can move it to another folder. And that's a great way to organize your work. Here's another one that's rather important. You can add a file or folder to the start folder to let you know that it is extremely important to you. You can rename it. You can change its color and that basically tells you something is important or different than the others. So you notice I've changed some of the colors of my folders. Let me know more about them. Next is search within projects. So you can search within a particular folder. You can download the contents of that folder or file. And of course the last one is remove. And our next topic is Google Photos. Now to find Google Photos, simply go to the Google Apps found in the upper right hand corner and then click on the icon called Photos. And that's how you can find it. And the best news is that you can also find the Google Photos app right on your smartphones. If you don't have the Google Photos app on your smartphone, simply go to the web store such as the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store. And then you can do a search for Google Photos and install it onto your smartphone that way. Once you've installed Google Photos onto your smartphones and logged into the same Google account that you use in your other devices, you'll begin synchronizing all of your photos into your private Google Photos photo album. And you'll be able to see those photos from any of your devices where you have logged into the same Google account. And you are able to share those photos or even download them. Let's look at some of the tools and features that we can find within Google Photos. 
When you first open photos, you'll be greeted with the photos that you've uploaded or have taken with your camera. They're all within this area called photos and they're arranged by their date. The newest ones are at the top. As you go down, they get to the older ones. At the very top, you have a search box. You can actually search your images and you also have other tools that you see on the top right hand side. Going back to the left hand side, the next item that we have is sharing. We'll see items such as individual photos and albums that we're sharing with other people or they are sharing with us. We can find other useful tools and features in the For You segment. Now, in this area we find where we can rediscover a day from the past and we can also even find short movies, animations and other types of things that the artificial intelligence found within Google Photos has created for us. If you like those items, you can always click on Save. At the top, we find the Create New. Here, we the first item is an album, where we can create an album and share it. Next, we have Prints, where we can print things out. Then we have Movie, where we can actually create movies from our images as well as our videos. Then we have Collage and Animation. Under Collage, let me show you how to actually create a collage. So here you're going to search for three or four or even five images that are all going to be combined into one nice photograph. Once you found a photograph that you want to use in your collage, go ahead and click it. And then begin the search for their second photograph. Now once you have found your second photo, go ahead and click it as well. And you'll be added to the collage. Now we're going to do the search for the third image. Now once you've found that perfect photograph for the ending of your collage, go ahead and click it and then click on create. After a few moments your collage is prepared for you. Now from here you can go ahead and share it or if you wanted to you can actually go in, download it, rotate it or do other changes to the image. Next let me show you how to create an animation. Go ahead and click it. Once you found your photos that you want to add to your animation go ahead and click on them and then click on create. After a moment or two, the animation is created. Now from here, you can actually download it, share it, such as post it on Facebook or other social media, and have a lot of fun with your animations. The truly amazing thing is that Google Photos Artificial Intelligence creates all kinds of albums, movies, short animations, all for you, and you can just go to the For You segment and see what it's created for you. If you like it, you go ahead and click on the Save button and it'll save it to your photos. Next is the Print Store. Within the Print Store, you can actually order your prints to be professionally printed for you. If you have a printer, it is possible to print your images as well at your house. Under Library, we have Albums. This is the place to find all of your albums. You can create new albums here as well as share different albums. Next is Utility. Next is Utilities. Within Utilities, you usually receive suggestions on items that can be moved to the archive or rotated. You also have Archive. Now with Archive, you can archive important photos such as photos of documents such as wheels, receipts, or other important things that you want to save. You can archive it that way. You also have Trash. Yes, it's true that you can delete any photo or album and it will be moved to the trash can. And here we find Upload. We can upload images from your computers. Then we have Help and Feedback. And after that we have Settings. Now the only settings that we really need to worry about in this context is that we want the high quality free unlimited storage. Yes, it's free and limited. That means you can have a million images up there and it's still free. So let's say I want to create a new album. What I could do is I can begin selecting images that I want to go into that album. Now I could go one by one on the images or I can click on one day and all of the images become highlighted and then the one that I don't want I can uncheck it and that one is left out. Now once I have the images selected that I want to go into that album the next thing I'm going to do is click on the plus then click on album and I'll create a new album and I'll call this one cars. Once you've given it a name click on the check mark and you're done. You can then share the album if you needed to or do things such as download it, edit it, or do other options with the album. Another cool feature in Google Photos is the search. So if I click on search it comes up and you notice how it groups similar faces together. Now I can search by face or by name. Now I can also go by things such as Selma, Japan, United States, look at my favorites, look at videos, selfies, or other options here. 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to just type in a word such as Tesla and hit enter. And within a few seconds, many images of Tesla's come up. The amazing thing is, if the word Tesla appears in the image, it will bring it up. So here we see the word Tesla's. It even brought this toy that looks like a Tesla. Here's another image of a man, but it has the word Tesla in it. Now here's the amazing thing. So here it doesn't look like a Tesla, but if I click on it, you'll notice that there is the word Tesla is handwritten on this whiteboard. So let's go to information and see what this image is. So there's no word Tesla in here for the title. It was taken by a smartphone. Here's the image name, when it was taken. There's no word Tesla. The only word Tesla is actually written right here on this whiteboard. So Google Photos is able to read your images and if you do a search for something, you'll actually bring up the correct images, which is absolutely amazing. So I'm gonna click on one of these images and bring it up and we wanna look at some of these options that we have. The first one is to share it. The next one is to edit the image. So if I click on edit, I'm able to go in and do many different things such as change the color and the hues. If I click over here, I have ability to change the amount of light or exposure, the color, and even the pop factor, which is the contrast. I'm also able to go over here and crop off areas that I don't want to see. So if I wanted to change and crop off some of the areas on the outside, I could do that. When I'm happy, I click on done. And I see the new image there. Now if I wanted to, I could click here and then save a copy or even copy the edits. I'm also able to rotate the image. So if I needed to, I could rotate it to any way that I wanted to. If I wasn't happy with these changes, I can click on undo edits and it would take me back to the original. The next tool that we have is the zoom in. We also have information. So if I click on information, I can give a description. I see the date. And I see other information about the image here. You can click on the star to add it to your favorites. Next is the delete or the trash can. So these are some of the ways that you can edit your images. Now it is possible that you can be taking photos with your cell phone and actually viewing your photos with Google Photos on your cell phone but then you log into the same Google account on another device and you don't see them. So what could be causing that to not be synchronizing? Well what we're going to do is click on at Google Photos, click on the three lines that you see up there in the upper corner and then you go down to settings and click it and then you're going to be seeing settings now the very first option you see on the top there is called backup and sync click that and then notice the first option says backup and sync that should be blue and turned on if you scroll down a little bit notice that it does say your backup device folders so you could add or subtract folders from your phone to be backed up or not and then the upload size normally what I do is I go high quality free unlimited storage so there's no limit on how many photos you can put up to your Google Photos below that it says cellular data backup now if you're connecting your phone to a Wi-Fi at home it'll upload your photos when it's connected to Wi-Fi but let's say you don't have Wi-Fi at your house then what you'd have to do is go down to where it says cellular data backup and notice the very first option says photos if you want your photos to be backed up on your cellular data then go ahead and choose on for that one if you want your videos to be added to that turn that on too but just be aware that when you turn that on it will be using your cellular data so if you only have so many gigs per month it will be using up some of that to upload and synchronize your photos 
Now the next question that usually pops up is that, hey, I've been taking up so many pictures that I'm running out of space on my cell phone. It's true that you don't have a limit to how many pictures that you can actually store in your Google Photos, but there is a limit on your cell phone. So how do you delete the pictures from your cell phone without deleting the photos from your Google Photos? Well, it's easy. Bring up the photo that you want to take out and then click on the three dots you'll see a menu that comes down. The very bottom it says delete from device. Click that and you get a little message that says delete from device. Items will remain in your Google account. That means they're going to stay in your Google Photos and you'll still see them just as before but they won't be taking up space on your phone. So click on the bottom button there that says delete from device and you'll take it off. Now you have more space on your cell phone. Now what I'd like us to do is to open up our books and turn to lesson number six, using Google Photos and Google Templates. So what are Google Photos? Now we've gone over this already with the video, but just to reiterate, Google Photos is that free app. It automatically uploads and synchronizes all your photos from your different devices to a folder within your Google Drive called your Google Photos. So photos taken with your cell phone are seen on your home computer and vice versa. This is all done automatically as long as you have installed the free app called Google Photos on your smartphone and have logged into the same Google account. It also organizes and allows you to search all of your photos in many different ways. This technology is simply amazing because it uploads photos taken with your cell phone instantly and even combines photos to make a panoramic picture and here are two examples. So a few years ago I went to Morro Bay with my family and my wife took these photos. And you can see here I'm dragging my children down the side of the sand dunes and as I was dragging them down my wife was taking different pictures and so Google Photos looked at these different pictures and was able to stitch them all together and make one beautiful panoramic picture out of them. Later I went home and I took a, about 13 or so images of the living room. The way that you do that is you stay in one spot such as a corner like I'm standing in and then I would take one picture and then move the camera a little bit and take another image and move over a little bit take another image move over take another image and so I'm looking around the entire room and with each photo it's overlapping the previous one taken so this took about 13 or so images but look how beautiful it is you don't even see where one photo ends and another photo begins it all looks like one large image even the detail in the sofas the couch over here and then the blinds everything just looks perfect there are no limits to how many photos and 1080p videos you can add to your Google Photos so take as many as you wish to find your photos just browse to your Google Drive click on the Google Photos or start the Google Photos app you may search photos by a person's name or their face or even a place or an object such as sky car or tree photos Within the main menu, which resides inside the sidebar of the Google Photos, there are many more tools and options that we saw earlier today. For example, there's the Assistant. The Assistant can create panoramic pictures from photos that were shot together, animations from photos shot within moments of each other, movies from events, and stories from photos shot within a time frame, for example, during a trip to Half Dome. You also have photos. This tool brings up all of your photos and they are all arranged by date taken. So the latest ones will be at the top of the list and the older ones at the bottom of the list. Next topic, what are Google templates? Templates are ready-made documents that you can customize to your use. You can find the Google templates within the template gallery and create your own personalized document, spreadsheet, presentation, or form. Whether you need a resume, a cover letter, an invoice, a birthday card, a calendar, or any of a wide variety of templates, Google Templates Gallery can help you get your document started. There were two types of templates that could be used with Google Documents and Google Spreadsheets. These were the classic templates that Google had been using for years and a new set of templates. As of October 2018, there is only one used and that is called the Google Template Gallery. The Google Template Gallery 
found within the doc's home which may be found in the upper left hand corner of a new blank document. So I'd open up into this page and show you docs here. Above that is search. Then you see the apps. Below that we have start a new document. We can start a blank document or create one from any of these templates. To see more templates we simply click on template gallery. Below this are recently worked on projects such as document spreadsheets and presentations. Here's how you can find the template gallery. You do not need to perform these steps at this time. Number one from when docs, sheets, slides or forms you click on the file menu as seen here. The file menu would then open then you click on new you go across and down and then you click on from template. From the templates gallery site you can browse templates by category you can sort templates by popularity or rating or by category or type of document. You may scroll up or down the list to view the templates that are available. Here we see the recently used if I scroll down then I see the resumes, letters, personal, work, sales, legal, human resources, freelance engagements, education. So there are many templates to choose from. Other categories and templates may be added by Google at any time. We're now going to begin the practice with the Google Template Gallery. Number one, you need to start the Chrome browser or open up your Chromebook and you'll need to log into your Google account if you haven't done so already. After logging in, you need to go to your Google page and then click on the apps icon as seen here. The app screen will load showing the apps that are installed in your account. You'll need to click on the Google Drive icon as seen here. Your Google Drive app should load. What I need you to do is locate your projects folder and then once you find it, double click it to open it. Once your project folder opens, you'll see the documents you've created in the past. And notice that your address should show the My Drive and then the Projects folder as seen here and here. What I'd like you to do is take your mouse and click once on the New button and a menu will come down and now click on Google Docs. It will ask you do you want to create this in a shared folder? Click on Create and Share. The Google Docs word processor should open to a blank document. Step number 14. Take your mouse and click once on Docs Home. If this is the first time that you have ever used Docs Home, then it will actually open up to a screen like this, which is a Welcome to Google Docs. If you want to, you can click on Take a Tour and take a quick tour of Docs Home. If not, click on the X or Done button. Docs Home should now look like this after closing the welcome screens. Step number 17. Click on the template gallery found in the upper right hand side of your screen. This will reveal more templates. Step number 18. Go down the list until you can find the template called Newsletter by Plum. You'll have a purple line as seen here and you'll have a, a black and white picture of a guitar in the middle. Step number 19. Open the template by clicking it. If any message appear, click on Got It or OK to close them. Step number 20. The template should load with a new document as seen here where it says Your Band, Newsletter, a date, and then it says We are nominated for the Best New Artist by band website and they'll have a photograph of a guitar. What we'll need to do is we need to rename the document. Now there's several ways to do this. One way to rename a document is to click on file and then go down and click on rename. And now you'll notice that rename is highlighted. What this needs to be named is newsletter project. So go ahead and click in there and type in the word newsletter project. Step 23. We'll now need to change the text that reads your band to be your name. Now an easy way to do this is to take your mouse and click once behind the D and then use the backspace found on your keyboard to take out the letters being careful not to delete anything else after that and then type in your name. After typing your name take your mouse and click in between the N and the E. 
use backspace once to take out the N. And then I need to have the word Christmas. So type in Christmas. Hit the space bar and then a capital N. So now we have Christmas newsletter. Step number 25. Change the date that's listed here to be today's date. So we'll do that now. Take your mouse and click behind September. You can use the backspace to take out that word and then type in. And now let's put in September the 28th and then the year 2020. Now if it is 2021, you can put in 2021 or whatever year it is that you're watching this video. After doing that, you'll have your name at the top, Christmas newsletter below that. Now we'll be ready for step number 26. You can replace the text easily by clicking to the right of any text and then using the backspace key. Delete the current text. After the current text is all gone, type in the new words. So now, step number 27. Replace the text that says, we are nominated for the best new artist by band website. You can do this by clicking right behind the last letter and then tapping the backspace key. Enough time to take out almost all of the words. Stop right there. So we still have the word we have had another great year. And here is the news. So go ahead and type that in. Step 28. After typing in, we have had another great year and here is the news, take your mouse and click once on the image of the guitar. It become highlighted as seen here. Now hit the enter key once and that image goes away. Now take your mouse and click on insert and then go down to images and now click on search. When you do that, we get a new window that says search the web here. We're going to click into the search box and type in the word Christmas. And then hit the enter key once. Images of Christmas should come up. You can take any of these and if you double click it, it will insert that image. There we go. Now we have an image inserted in after the text. Below that it says a big thank you. So all we need to do now is to take our mouse and click in between the word you and the explanation mark. Hit the space bar and then type in these words. So it would be a big, big thank you to all of our friends and family for making this a great year. Now what I'd like you to do is take your mouse and click between the T and the period on the very first paragraph on the second page. Now this is not English, in fact it's not any language, it's just random letters put together. So when you do that, you'll hit the backspace to take out those random letters because they're not a real language. And we're going to be putting in our own sentence. So the sentence that we're going to be putting in is, we were able to go to Morrill Bay and we had a great day at the beach. Now what I'd like to do is click below the last paragraph here and then use your backspace to take out those random letters and words and then type in this short sentence. Here's a picture of Morro Bay. Hit the enter key after typing in that short sentence and then what we're going to do is we're going to be inserting one more image. So take your mouse, click on insert, go down to image and then search the web. 
This time we're going to type in Moral Bay and then hit the enter key once. And we'll use one any of these images you want to use. And double click on one. As you can see there, it inserts the picture into our newsletter project. Now this document will automatically be shared with your teacher if it was created within your shared folder. Step 23. After creating the first document, you need to go back to templates and to find the letters. So to find the templates, we can go up here to Docs Home and then click on Template Gallery. And after this, we're going to scroll down to the letters. What I like to do is to click on the business letter that says Geometric, and that opens up the template called the business letter. Now, for this one, we do not need to change the name, but we do need to change some information inside of it. So, what I like you to do is click on the space right behind the Y and go backspace and type in the name of our company, which is capital K I O apostrophe O S. And then for the address, we're going to click into the numbers and type in the address 899. We're going to take out the word your and replace it with first. For the city, we're going to replace that with the word Selma. And then for ST, we're going to put in CA for California. And the zip code is 93662. We're not going to change the phone number or the email address. We'll keep those the same. For the date, we're going to change that. So click right behind September and use your backspace key to take out those. So click behind the date and put in the current date, whatever date it is. And then type, click in behind the year and put in the current year. So we'll be putting in the month, day, and year. And before it was going to Mrs. Ronnie Reader, we're going to take out that. And so now it's going to Mr. Rick Gonzalez. And then for the address, we're not going to change that. We're going to leave it as 123 Address Street. But for the city, we're going to change that to the word Selma for the city. For the state, we're going to put California or just CA. And then for the zip code, we're going to put in 93662. And down here it will say, Dear Mr. Gonzalez. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight this text by dragging my mouse over. That's one way to take out this text. And then I hit the backspace and that takes out all those words. And what I'm going to say is, it was a pleasure to see you at the office the other day. And now the next sentence says, if we can provide you with any assistance, comma, please let us know. And then we'll have a space and then best regards. We'll have a space for a signature. And then below that we have your name. Now for your name, go ahead and type in your name and then below that it will say CEO and then your company. Now an easy way to put in the company name is to take your mouse click once behind the S and then drag across and then right click the blue area now and select copy and then highlight the words that say your company and then right click it and say paste. There we go. Now you've completed your letter. We want to make sure that we're sharing these documents with your teacher. So what we're going to do is open up a new tab by clicking on the new tab icon found at the top of your screen. So on my computer it looks like a plus but on your computer it may look like this square here. It depends on which version of Chrome OS you're using. Number two, click on the app launcher and then go down to the Google Drive. The Google Drive app should load. Number five, if the documents that you just created are not in the project folder, then you can move them by dragging and drop them into that specific folder. So it's gonna look like this, where you see your drive, 
and then in the main area you will see the projects that you just created take your mouse in the middle of any of those hold down the mouse clicker and then drag it and then drop it into your project folder and do that for both of these projects that you made today that way you know that your projects are being shared with me Mr. Barry now we'll be ready for our next topic our next topic is about creating your own templates now creating the same types of files over and over can be not only time consuming but inconsistent if done at a work or at a school site with many people working on the same type of files so to save time and money create your own template that can be used over and over again let me show you how hey here I am in Google Docs now what you want to do first is you need to open up the file that you want to make a copy of and you see me doing that now so you can go in look through your Google Drive or look through other places normally I just go to Docs Home from Docs Home you have your documents there go ahead and double click or open your file then in the menu click on file and then click on make a copy type in a name and choose where you want to save it To copy any comments to your new file, click on Copy Comments and Suggestions, then click on OK. Now to show or hide your templates, open Google Docs Home. So at the top left, click on the menu and then click on Settings. And now you have your settings there where you can show or hide your templates and your recently used documents. Go ahead and choose the options that you want and you're all set. Now with this document you can share it with your co-workers or others who need to use it as well. And now you know how to create and save a template. We are now ready for the review questions for Google Photos and Google Templates. So if you're taking this class for credit please take out a clean sheet of paper, write your name along the top, Answer the questions and pass them in to your teacher. Or you may email them to your teacher. Question number one. Google Photos automatically uploads your photos to your Google Drive if the device is logged in to your Google account. Is this A true, B false, or C none of the above? Number two, the Google Photos app can be installed from which Android app or store? Number three, if you are logged into your Google account, you may see the photos stored within your Google Photos by going to which app? Question number four. Google templates can be found under which menu? Question number five. Google may add or remove templates from their template folder. Is this A true, B false, or C none of the above? Question number six. What is the name of this icon? Question number seven. What is the name of this icon? Question number eight. What is the name of this icon? Question number nine, what is the name of this icon?
question number 10. What is the name of this icon? In this lesson, we covered a number of features found within Google Photos and Templates. Using Google Photos, finding Google Templates, changing the contents of a template to fit your needs. Hey, we've come to the conclusion of another lesson. This was lesson number six. Now, there will be a part following this, as I've been doing in a lot of my lessons, where I'll be going over this time over some of the comments that you have submitted to me. So I'm going to give you shout outs there. Uh, towards the end of this video here and if you like this video just want to remind you please click on thumbs up it really helps the channel greatly when you click on thumbs up because then YouTube shares it with more people and that's a good thing also if you haven't subscribed to my channel please subscribe to the channel and click on the bell icon there so you get notifications when new videos are uploaded Thank you again, and now I'm going to give those shout outs to some of those who have left wonderful comments. Alright, so here we go. So the first one we have is from Eric Stephanie. OMG, thank you so much. I was just on my lunch break in online school, and my Chromebook just turned to a black screen. And any button I pressed, it wouldn't do anything. I almost missed my class. Well, there you go, Eric. I'm very happy that I was able to help you. So here's your shout out and thank you again for leaving a wonderful comment. And the next comment is from Surinam L. This is wonderful. Thank you. Oh, you're very welcome Surinam. I'm just so happy that I was able to create those videos there and that one was concerning the Gmail's new look and features. And our next one there is from Tammy Deborah. Love the simplicity. Hey there you go I'm very happy to keep it simple and this one was about how to find emoji characters right on your Chromebook and we have another one here from Rebecca Naomi thank God this video exists I would have died by my mother <laughs> wow and this was how to uninstall apps and extensions right on your Chromebook so I was very happy to help you there uh, Rebecca <laughs> and our next one is from Jim Pelegi, and I'm sorry if I mispronounce your, your names there. It says here, Daniel, teacher, professor, absolutely outstanding in the field. I have been meaning to reset the BIOS password on my Latitude E6420 for, oh, I don't know, seven years? Yeah, since 2013. Yikes! I am not even sure how I came across this video today. Just Googled uh, Latitude BIOS reset and there you were. Of course, I have subscribed and I like your channel. I've even perused a few other articles and video. Thanks for the procedure. You have made my day and started off my weekend with a great note. Looking forward towards more contributions. Keep up the good work. Ciao for now, Jim P. And this was on resetting your admin password on a Dell Latitude laptop. And this one is also about resetting your password on a Dell laptop. This is from Mudassar Abbas. Thanks from Pakistan. Hey, you're welcome there. I'm very happy to help. Next one is from Oscar Ferrero. Genial. Funciona ahoy. 25 de septiembre. 2020. And that's for his Chromebook. I mean, that's for his laptop there, his Dell laptop. And it translates to great. Works today, September 25th, 2020, on my Dell E6430. And thanks there. So I'm very happy to help you reset your password on your Dell laptop. And the weak hurricane 0102 says, thanks man. Hey, you're welcome. I'm happy to be helpful there. And Michael Toner says, brilliant video. Now I know how safe my Chromebook is. Hey, I'm very, very happy to give you that information. And Norman Whitley, thank you. Enjoyed your video as usual. <laughs> There you go. I'm very happy to help. And this was on the how and the why we need to open up the Chromebooks. And so it's the disassembly or opening up, up of a Chromebook. And Hunter Brake. It worked. Thank you so much. This was really important for my online school. Hey, you're welcome, Hunter. And Jaime Price says, interesting to see the inside of one of these. Thanks. And Jaime, thank you for the comment there. And I'm always happy to help. And we have a comment from Petra. 
She gives a timestamp and then the word enjoyed. So I'm glad that you enjoyed the video. That was on the computer literacy lesson number five. All right. And now here's a group of comments. First one there is from that time. Sir, you are undervalued. I have searched everywhere for a solution. You just helped me so much. If I ever decide to do any extracurricular computer classes, your website will be the first to go to. And unfortunately, that website there, that website is an older website, I haven't updated it. Basically, all my updated and the newest lessons are right here at YouTube, Summa Teacher 7 channel. And you can actually see my playlists there and uh, be able to find all the classes there. And then my response was, uh, thank you. Please sub and enjoy the newer videos on technology. Next is from Graham Payne. I clicked on this because I needed a refresher on Google Docs. Mission accomplished. Over the years, I have used many different word processing programs, and sometimes a refresher helps. I have used WordStar, WordPerfect, Microsoft Word, OpenOffice, and more that I can't remember the names of over the more than 40 years. That also does not include machine-specific programs such as the one used in the Wang mini computer and machines dedicated to word processing such as the Smith Corona. Not bad for someone who learned how to type on a manual portable typewriter. <laughs> that isn't one awesome comment. Uh, uh, thank you for the comment and I'm just very happy to uh, help you out there. And the next one is from Sheriff Hawkwings there. It says, hey, thanks for making your wonderful lessons online and safe. Well, you're welcome there, Sheriff. Next one there is from Alexandria and she says, Thanks, and you're welcome. Here's a personal thank you to all those who've made wonderful comments. And here's two more comments. These refer to how to turn on the Chromebook that's not turning on. And the first one's there uh, said, I thought I was going to get grounded because I broke my Chromebook again. Well, PRX is uh, CHE. I was very happy to help you turn on your Chromebook. And next one there is from Gio Carlos. Again, I'm sorry if I mispronounce your names. And this one says, thank you so much. I was gonna be late. So I'm glad I was able to help you out. So here's the last group of comments that I'll share today. I receive hundreds a day and I'm just picking a few from the last week here that I thought I'll share that here with others. And uh, the very first one is from Exexil. Um, OMG, thank you, it worked. I thought I want to get uh, in trouble from my parents. So <laughs> that one there was for uh, turning how to turn on your Chromebook that won't turn on. So I was, again, very happy to help you there. And the next one is from Senyu um, uh, Shiro. OMG, it worked, thanks a lot. And that was for resetting your password on the uh, Dell laptop. And the next one there is from Emery BS. Hi, thank you. I did try this and it works, but we directly went into the local guest account. Then, then when I again opened the laptop after a month, the screen says unable to log in because your account has been locked out. Please contact administrator. And then we went back and forth uh, trying to fix her problem there that we had she had with logging into her um, accounts. So there you go, lots of comments, and I receive uh, basically around 100 or so comments from my different videos every day. Sometimes they come through YouTube, sometimes people actually email me the, uh, the question or the comment, and other ways there's, I get messages all the time. Anyway, I appreciate all of yours, and if you leave a comment, yours might be uh, out there on the next video there, and I'll make sure I give a shout out to you. Thank you. And what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go and dive into my video editing program because some have actually commented and asked, said, hey, can you show us some more, maybe show us the transitions and how you do green screen. I go, okay, I'll do that. So um, here's my video without me turning on the green screen filter. So I actually have a green screen and I bought this one here at Walmart and I bought a second one at Amazon and both of them work the same way. I just I use one of them here in the office and then I have another place where I would put it up and I work there as well. But um, they work very well to create basically any type of a background. So sometimes you'll see me working and I'll have, go like this and I'll say, okay, here's the document like we see here. And 
that's how I do it. I just simply do the filming in front of this green, green, this green screen and then um, I'll turn on the filter. So let me show you now how I actually turn on that filter and some of the numbers that I use. So hey, you can learn how to do some of the videos as well. So what I'll do is I'll move my selector. This this right here is my selection. This this tells me exactly where I am in the video. If I scroll in, I can zoom in, and these are the uh, sound or the audio tracks down here, and the video tracks up on the top. And we have me talking here. So let's say I wanted to change part part of this. Let's snip it. So I'm going split the selected clip here and then I'll click it so it becomes highlighted then I'll go over here to my effects table now the effects I can add all kinds of different effects such as you see here I can even zoom it position scale it rotate do other things and this is why I'm doing all the time with the video to give it some animation but right now what I'm going to do is go ahead and click on green screen and it will show which color is selected and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to uh, select this type of green that I have which is it's not 255 it's actually down there to about 140 and then the threshold I'm going to bring that up just a little bit to 63 and snap the background goes away and you just see me there now now I can play this as you see I'm doing here I'm just scrolling it along with my mouse and you can see um, the background has disappeared that green background has disappeared and it's playing something else well what is that something else well it's on another video track so that's on video track number one I have down here so it works like that and if I wanted to add other videos or other let's see, images or other things then I would simply drag and then drop them up in here into one of these video tracks above me. If I had a different audio recording, I have many of them for example, and I wanted one of those to be playing, maybe I messed up on one of my words, then what I'll do is I'll drag that down and place it down here into one of my audio tracks. As you see I have uh, five audio tracks right now, but I can have as many as I need. So let me zoom out just a little bit here and show you some of, the, some of the work here in this particular lesson. This was lesson number six. And it's, let's see, this one took three days to make. Why three days? Well, um, the actual lesson was up here to about, four, about 41 minutes or so, somewhere around there, 45 minutes. And uh, usually it takes one hour for me to say my la my lines correctly without me messing up and so I have to repeat them over and over again and when I mess up on a word like I did here I guess you take out that word and then I replace it there so it will it will um, sound correct there okay the next uh, question that came up I noticed was people were asking well how do you do transitions all right so let's go back to towards the end so I don't mess up my work and let's see, I want to do a transition. If you notice, all the video clips uh, have these little tiny X's on them. The X is for a transition. So I can click that and then I get into my transitions window. And I have many different types of transitions. If I wanted to turn on one like shatter, then I can click there and also notice the duration. The duration that I have been using for the last uh, few videos is a half a second before it was one second, but I've become impatient, I guess. I'm only using a half second duration, and if I click on that transition, then that's what's going to happen to this image here. So let's look at it and see how it works. There it goes. And what, what you see is the background there. So right now I don't have a background. Now I can move that, so let's see if I moved it over here and then replayed it. There you go, so that works okay. And if I want to trim part of a video off, like this, this one right here, all I have to do is 
go up to the very tail end of the video, take my mouse right there, and hold down the clicker, and simply drag it up, drag it in there, and it shows me the time. So if you notice, there's a time, it says end time, and then it has duration as well for that clip. So everything's working there. So that's how we do transitions, and that's how we work with our green screen. Let me see here. Yes. Okay, so yeah, that works well. Now if I want to move that back, or if I want to undo anything, right here is your undo key, or, or button. You can click on undo at any time, and you'll undo some of the things that you've done. So let's look and see what we have up here. I have sequences, so I have one sequence. I have 32 individual video files that I used on this one. This is a, a rather lengthy lesson. It goes into a lot of detail on your Google Drive, Google Photos, templates, and even how to create and save your own template. Here's the audio files, and these would be background music that usually goes on um, the audio tracks at the very, very end. So down here, audio track five there. And I have other sound effects I use. Images. These are the little images you see throughout the video. So if I click on one, you'll recognize it. Oh yeah, there's one of the images. So I have to make each one of these before I'm making the video, you might say. Have everything ready and then I drag and I drop it into place. So if I drag something, I drop it into here and that's what these little pieces are, these little gray slabs you see down here. They are all like images and different things. So usually it's image, but it also can be a text file. Something similar to even like a word art file. Okay, so that's the images I've been using for this one. And here's some of the some of the other files that you see here. So this would be more like a, a text file. And then we have the video recordings. The video recordings would be videos of me. And that would that's what you see there you can click on a video file and add any of the effects such as green screen before you drag and drop it down into your your timeline here uh, this is one that I actually did the number 32 I actually did the green screen before I dropped it in that's rare usually I add the green screen after I've added it to my timeline other things I can do is crop mirror motion motion blur pan zoom place in 360 position rotate scale shake split screen wrap zoom and those are the motion and transforms that we use I would like more it would be so nice to have like four different others um, one of them what I really like would be one that I can uh, trace it's called trace and basically I would print an image and then the image would follow that trace and move around the screen um, another one here uh, would be like panning and zooming into I know this one says it but it doesn't do what I want to do I want to um, pan and zoom into an image that's moving on this track and I had that in my other video editor but not on this one the video pad and we have other types of effects here such as blending color correction and then filters that I use and I actually do use all of these next is the audio recordings this is um, <laughs> believe it or not it's me saying a word over again many times I'll say a word or I'll be saying I'll be doing my lines my script and I totally mess up on a word so um, I might say the word like green screen and then have a difficult time saying green screen for some reason I don't know why my brain does that but I'll be just speaking my lines and suddenly instead of green screen I'll just say blah or something you know it just it just doesn't come out right and that happens actually about once um, per paragraph or so when I'm reading my lines so that's why you see me having to redo at least one word in each of um, each paragraph of my lines there and I don't know it's happened more and more I guess after a person turns 50 that's just something that happens and uh, it's hard to hard to say your lines correctly I have been teaching the classes for more than 20 years by the way and I used to just stand on stage and just 
speak my lines without any problems at all. And uh, now, uh, for some reason, my brain hesitates and tries to think of the words. I, maybe I'm thinking too much, I guess, in my old age. Yeah, I guess that, 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 that might be it. But anyway, so as I get older, yeah, it's, it's harder to speak clearly, I guess. And so you see here, I have to redo my lines. I'm not redoing these. I'm going to just let you hear exactly what I sound like when I talk to you on the street, I guess. <laughs> oh, dear me. I hope it's not that bad. Anyway, <laughs> I do uh, have to redo my lines quite a bit. So that's, what I, that's where I'm getting these audio files here. Now, <clears throat> how do you make those? Well, it's rather easy. On this, you just click on record, and then from record, you go, uh, the, the record video is this. This is what the record video looks like, and then this is uh, a capture a screenshot. I don't use that too often. I usually use this icon down here that I'm pointing to, where it says uh, snapshot. I usually do that for the screenshots. Up here, it says record screen, and that's when you see me working and using the mouse and pointing and clicking on like the word file and then clicking on open or something. Uh, for those segments I'm using the record screen. Uh, in fact I'm using that tool right now to record this screen. Next is record audio and if I click that it opens up a tool which allows me to record my voice or other things and narrate. Again it's recording my voice but then it plays the background for me so I can uh, say what's going on in the video and so I'll use all of these here you know, on any of the uh, videos I produce. Um, save project I'm always clicking on save project as I go in case my, my Windows 10 I'm doing this on a Windows 10 computer in case it crashes and it does crash and it's crashed where I've actually lost a day of work like oh no <laughs> So um, it hasn't done it today. So but anyway, um, so I'm I'm always clicking on save work, and then this one is when I want when I'm done with the project, and I want to say okay I'm ready to publish my work to YouTube. I will actually click here and choose that option and save it and then upload it to YouTube. Adding files is how you add. You click there and then you can add other files. I, I use other programs. For example, I use Elview Photo Editor as well as, as uh, GIMP and a, a handful of other image or photo editors. When I've created my image, I usually will save it in my Google Photos on my Chromebook and then I'll download it to my Windows machine using Google Photos and then I'll pick that one up using the Add File option here. Add Text. I, I'll click that and show you how to add text. And that's that's the tool for adding text. And I can just use the word text there. There it is. There it is. And then I can highlight it and change the font size if I needed to. Change the color. And I can I can do a lot of different things such as the outline and add a shadow and even change the uh, font styling. Uh, this is bold italics underline. This is the alignment within my screen. Left, center, right, justification. A top, middle, bottom uh, alignment. And if I don't want that, I can go over here and I'm looking down here now and I need to find it. And usually, there it is. I believe it's that one that's dark. And what I'll do is I'll click it and then I'll hit delete and that little bit of text goes away. So that's how I do that. And if I want to add a blank, I click there and that's how I, I actually do some of the transitions into. So it's they're called intro transitions. In order to do that, you have to insert a blank before that video clip or image. And uh, that allows me to uh, create the transition like an intro transition, which is kind of nice. I got to click there and I've already told you about the record. And I and you notice I have some other tools here. Yes, I do use the undo quite often. And uh, you notice here I have other options such as within the clips, sequence, audio, expert, suite, custom. So I do have even more options or more tools uh, that I do use 
on creating the videos and trying to create the very, very best videos I can for you. I'm not perfect, and uh, some people have, you know, they say, oh, can't you do a better green screen? Well, I try my best. Um, I, I did not go to school with video, um, you know, to do videos. I went to school for as a computer, um, as a computer tech. Uh, that was my first degrees and then I went back to college again to be a teacher so um, spent many many years uh, in university to be um, uh, um, an instructor in all areas so I was able to get certification in in all subjects so I could teach math for example or or English or other other things like that history I love history I love science that's one of my favorite things so if you're a a um, um, someone who wants an astronomy um, an astronomy teacher there I love astronomy actually wrote books in astronomy but that was back in the late 1980s yes I'm antique <laughs> okay um, let me see hey thank you very much and I appreciate every single one of you I thank you for the subscribe for the subscribers what I've been able to do is actually add a uh, PayPal link to my YouTube channel so if you ever wanted to buy me coffee or something like that you can actually click in the PayPal and put a few pennies in there or a few dollars whatever you want and buy me a, a cup of coffee that's okay I don't I won't complain about that um, and I did that because some in some of the comments they were actually saying hey we want to pay you you've saved me a lot of a lot of effort and you just giving me the instructions here through the comments I want to pay you so well there you go um, I give you an option there to pay me through PayPal and that's through uh, Soma Teacher 7 that be at the top right hand corner let me see um, hey so there you go now you know a lot more of what I do to create videos with the green screen and the transitions and everything else alrighty hey thank you again and bye bye let me go and shatter out in three, two, one. Whew.